product uh, when we do things like shopping TV. It's always a big seller. So we thought it would be a really good thing to do to give you a bit of education and just show you some of the really cool things that you can do with them. Now, what are they first of all? We have a big range of shaker domes. So we've got these three, just to start with, we've got these three different sizes here of our uh, circular shaker domes. Now a shaker dome, it's a plastic see-through dome that's going to go on the front of a card or, or any make really and it's going to provide opportunities to use other products such as uh, glitter if you wanted to make a shaker card maybe or sequins and beads or it's also just a really great way to create a focal point on your card because we're literally creating a window on your card just to showcase something special. Now here are our three different sizes. I should mention at this point as well, with our circular shaker domes, we've got this set of framelit dies and these are all sized perfectly to fit these domes, okay? So I'll just put those to one side there. We also have our, now this is a two in one actually, this is an egg shaker dome, but turn it upside down and it's also a balloon shaker dome. So if you're creating really cool patterns using glitter, making a shaker card, you could have a balloon that has some um, cool stuff inside it that you can shake around. So there's our balloon shaker dome. We also have this lovely festive Christmas tree. That is fantastic. So the possibilities with this, all those different festive colours all in one see-through window on the front of your card. That's amazing. And the same thing with these brilliant star domes. So they come in all different shapes and sizes, but we've also got these inspired by Mr. Tim Holtz, these smaller shaker domes here. Now, let me just show you the range of different makes that we can create with these shaker domes. So these here, this is using those smaller Tim Holtz shaker domes here. And just look at that detail. Your attention is instantly drawn to what's in here, which is just what we want sometimes when we're making a card. So you can see here, we've got these lovely little loose elements that you can shake around like sprinkles on this cake here. But here we've just showcased this butterfly in there and it just looks more special. Here we want people to be looking at that number 25, maybe symbolizing the 25th of December, which is our Christmas, just on that card there. And you can just see your eye is instantly drawn to that card there. So there are smaller shaker domes. And we've got these other circular ones here. So we've got different sizes. Now you might notice I haven't used one of the bigger ones. That's because I'm gonna be doing a make just in a second. Uh, and you're going to be using one of our biggest shaker domes there. Now just look at these, all those cards, it's just created a window on the front of that card just to look through and see something special. And these here have also got little bits of our sequins and beads on the inside. And what a cool noise it makes when you shake it. Again, we have the Christmas tree card here and I filled this full of nice festive red beads here. And just look at that, brilliant. And here is our star shaker dome there. So with a starry night theme, maybe for a New Year's card or something like that. So there's just a few of the products here. We've used them just to make really, really simple here. All we've done is we've cut out two of our circular uh, domes here and we have stuck them together to create these hanging tree ornaments full of our lovely gold sequins and beads there and then we have a silver one too so the possibilities are endless with the shaker domes now onto my make i'm going to be using this larger shaker dome here now this is a really great opportunity to showcase something on your card it takes up a lot of the area of my card so i want to create a scene within here that's just going to be a really lovely thing to look at so the first thing i'm going to do I'll move this to one side here. I'm going to start by using some of our Ranger inks. Now, if you go over to the Tim Holtz hub, you can see these available on our Sizzix website. Now, I'm going to come in from the top here. This is chipped sapphire, and I'm just going to add some ink here. 
I want to get it darker towards the top because what we're going to create here is a kind of night sky scene, maybe a hint of the sun going down. So as I say, I'm going to get heavier towards the top and then lighter as I get towards the middle there. I don't want to worry too much about the sides because I'm going to add a little bit of the mustard seed colour in the sides. And if you haven't seen it, this is our Sizzix multi-tool with my blending head there, which is just a fantastic ergonomic way to blend. It's like holding a pen, which is just something that we're all really familiar with. Now I'm going to add a bit of mustard seed just at the bottom and again I'm going to come come in from the bottom I'm not starting I'm not starting on the actual thing that I'm inking I'm going to just going to start off the side of it because I like to come in and then I get to choose how heavy it's going to be a lot more easily so I don't need to worry too much about how well I'm inking at the minute because this is going to be covered up by a bit of a scene that I'm building up on the inside. So I'm going to come in again with one of these distress inks. This is Barn Door. Which is nice. Do you know what? I'm not even going to apply it because I know that the sponge will have some on and I want this to be subtle. So you can see maybe that I have marked a circular area here and that's because I'm going to be using one of our circular framelit dies just to cut around this. There we go. Now I can see here, I'm just going to come in with a tiny, tiny bit heavier on the side there. Just, just coming in on the side. And there. You'll see now that I'm going to cut over this marked circular area. So I'll bring on my big shot machine. I'm going to take my larger framelit die here. And then I don't have to use this area that I've marked because I could choose. You know, these framelits are fantastic. Just think of the title it's a frame. You frame the part that you're happy with. And then you just cut round there. So I'm going to cut here. So I will sandwich up my big shot machine. Just reposition that. And I'm not going to use any maker's tape on this part because we don't need to be accurate. But a bit later on, I am going to use some. I'm going to keep the machine there because I am going to use it again. Just in a minute. So you can see here, just push off a bit of that debris, we've got this lovely inked area. Now the fact that we've cut around it with the framelit has just cleaned the whole thing up and I've just taken this really beautiful part from the middle there. Now I've pre-printed a sentiment piece here. So we've got this Winter Wishes sentiment and I've left room for this framelit which is from the set which is going to fit with my dimensional domes here. So as you can see, that fits perfectly around the middle. So I'm going to cut a hole just for that to peep through. Now I am going to use some of my maker's tape. So I'm just going to position this so that, now when I'm positioning, I look at the sentiment, the space between the bottom of the sentiment and the top, I want that to be similar if we're going for that kind of symmetrical look. And then again, spaced evenly from the sides and the top there. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of my maker's tape. I'm just gonna put it across here without moving it, just to hold that in place. Now I can sandwich it up. And I'm gonna put it back through the machine. So you'll see now, I take this away and I take my big shot away because I won't be needing that. I can place this on top of here. We've just got that lovely kind of sunset effect. So I've pre-cut these. Now these are 
it's from a fantastic die set called Thin Ice by Tim Holtz. Now these are the trees from this die set. It's from chapter three, and I just thought these would look really nice coming in front of this sunset just to create the scene. And you know what? I am gonna use the big shot again because rather than using scissors to cut, I'm gonna bring this back on. Now I could use scissors just to trim the bottom because I want it to fit on my scene here. These are gonna go just on the top of here to create a kind of scene there. And I want them to be facing each other because I almost wanna create that kind of fisheye lens sort of thing where we're looking up into the sky. Now, I need to cut the bottoms of these but I want to cut them in an arc. So I'm gonna use the same framelit. I'll position these. Out here, I'm going to use the same framelit and I'm going to put that on top so I know they're going to be positioned and cut correctly here. Again, I'm going to have them just leaning towards each other there. And then I can sandwich up the machine and just put that there. Yeah, that has just left me there with these two tops of the trees and they're cut perfectly just to go in my scene there. So I'll move this out of the way. Now I don't need the big shot. But I do need to position these trees. So I want them to be facing towards the sky, facing each other around there. And I'm gonna put them a little bit higher because this piece of card is wide enough for me to stick this down onto. And then I've got that space around here and, and on the bottom of this card to stick onto my actual card there. So I will just stick these down. Now I've not gone with glue today because I want the tops of these trees to be a bit free. If they wanted to come up a bit, then that would be fine. Just to create a little bit of dimension. So I'm gonna measure them probably about Let's say a centimetre, maybe half a centimetre from the top there. There's one, and you can see how it's just sticking up there, creating that dimension. Like so. Now, this part would be the trickiest bit. It's not tricky, but it's the trickiest part of this make, so... What I'm gonna do is I want to add these fantastic little snowflake from our sequins and beads collection. Now this is from the festive collection. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pour them in the middle, just a nice pile of them. And I wanna try to make sure that they don't go over the sides there because that's gonna stop the adhesive strip on these. Now I've got none around the sides, so that means I can place this on top. So I'm just gonna peel away that protective layer there and then I'm going to put this on top like so. Now it does have a bit of movement there. It's not too sticky that you can't reposition it once you've put it down. Now that that's stuck down, you can just see, well, I might have added too much snow there. <laughs> it's actually covering the thing, but we won't do that next time and I'll show you the one I've made where <laughs> I haven't added too much snow. And if you can hear my uh, cameraman sniggering, that's Pete Hughes. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay, so I've put the, um, the adhesive on the bottom of here. Now I'm going to push this through here so that I can definitely frame it correctly. And then I'm ready to stick this down. Like this. So I've cut my card base the exact same size as my front sentiment, just to create that nice card bit there. There, so now I've positioned that correctly. I can then apply the adhesive to this. Oh, this, this is a godsend. This little adhesive runner. And I can put that on top. and position it. And there we go. 
So what a lovely card. Now I did apply definitely too much of that snow, but if you look at the one I made earlier, we'll just switch those about there. You can see that that's the perfect amount of that glitter. And if we just move it around in the light, you can see how the lovely glitter there catches the light. Now, it wouldn't be possible to use this glitter in this way where it's all nice moving around like snow in real life unless we had these fantastic dimensional domes. So they allow you to give a focal point to the card. They also allow you to use um, these glitters and the sequins and beads in this lovely way that creates movement on your card. So go to the website if you just want to check again the range of dimensional domes that we have. They are such fantastic things to use. What I always say is using dimensional domes, that is next level crafting. So go ahead, look at the website and, and I look forward to seeing what you guys can do with the dimensional domes.